Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the channel and this one is going to be all about the different blocks and machines that you can see on your screen right now. Now most of these blocks and machines will be pretty useful to you in survival and some can even save your life in this mod. Now you guys have been requesting these for quite some time now and as these topics were not big enough to make individual videos about, I am just gonna cover all of these in this one single big video. Now it is gonna be a long one so be sure to use the chapters in the description as if you want to skip to a specific section make sure you go to that and also don't forget to use not enough items as it is gonna make your life a whole lot easy so without any further ado my guys let's get straight into it So the first topic for today guys is gonna be the radiation absorber and there are a total of 4 kinds available with different rates of absorption. So in order to craft the normal radiation absorber you are gonna need 4 industrial grade copper ingots, 4 coal powder and 1 lead powder in the middle and that will give you a normal radiation absorber. Now upon that you can build the enhanced radiation absorber which will take 4 titanium ingots in the corner, 4 coal powder and 1 radiation absorber. Upon that you can build the advanced radiation absorber with 4 polymer blends, 4 dash blends and 1 enhanced radiation absorber. And finally, for the elite radiation absorber, you are gonna need 4 satellite ingots, 4 titanium blend and finally 1 advanced radiation absorber. Now, these things do what their name suggests. They will take out radiation from entire chunks at a specific rate according to the tier that they are. Now, radiation seems to be broken in this update, but yeah. The radiation absorber will take out 5 chunk reds per second, the enhance will take out 20, the advance 200 and finally the elite will take out 220,000 chunk reds per second. So yeah, now let's take the example of this nuclear reactor here. It is full with fuel and I am gonna operate it at 91% capacity. Now as you can see I have taken out all the concrete shielding so this thing should be spewing out radiation like anything right now. But as you can see, it is isn't. As I told you, radiation is kinda broken in this update. But let's assume it was. So what do you do in order to get rid of that radiation? Well, you just take your radiation absorber and you place them around like this. As I have told you, they all have different rates of absorption. So yeah, this is how you use the radiation absorber. Just place them around wherever there is radiation and they will take it out. Now let's say that you have been irradiated and you have been contaminated with radiation. What do you do in order to get rid of it? Well, for that we have the player decontaminator, one of the most useful blocks in this mod. Now the player decontaminator is crafted using 4 beryllium ingots, 2 steel ingots or rather 3 steel ingots, 1 iron bar and 1 radiation absorber and that will give you player decontaminator. It requires no power to run and it will basically get rid of the contamination that you have or the player has so let me go into survival and dance on this fallout now as you can see my contamination is quickly going up and i currently have around 31 to 32 reds of radiation and now it's gone up to 37 so yeah so how do i take this out without consuming anything or without consuming a red away. Well, just stand upon the player decontaminator and it will get rid of your radiation. Pretty cool, right? So this block, you have to craft it just once and basically place it around your nuclear base or before entering your base and make a little platform like this and it will get rid of all the radiation for you. Pretty cool, right? So this was the player decontaminator. It is one of the most useful blocks in this mod. Now third, we are gonna discuss seals and vents. So there are three types of vents available, the chlorine vent, cloud vent, and the pink cloud vent. And also there is the chlorine seal. Now the vents and seal, basically what they do is release gas in the atmosphere. And it is crafted using this specific section like this. So yeah, the cloud vent is gonna be crafted the same way, six iron plates, one dispenser, one iron bar, but instead a jar of cloud. As for the pink cloud vent, it is gonna be the same, 6 iron plates, 1 dispenser, 1 iron bar with a jar of pink cloud. And finally, as for the seal, which is the chlorine seal, this is gonna be the most expensive, 4 satellite ingot, 4 star metal ingot, 
and one chlorine pin wheel. Now let's see these things in action because once you place them like this, they are not gonna do anything. So in order to activate these vents and seal, you need to apply redstone power. Now the gases they are gonna release have their own specific characteristics. So that this is the chlorine seal or chlorine vent right here. And if I walk into it, if I come in contact with chlorine gas, you can see that I have slowness, poison, mining, fatigue, wither and blindness. So many effects. And yeah, using this in an enclosed area is the best option. And in order to protect yourself from it, you need to wear a gas mask and you should also have the gas mask filter. So if I wear a gas mask and walk into it, hold on, let me get rid of the status effects that I have. And as you can see, now that when I walk into it, I'm not gonna get any status effect, right? But my gas mask is quickly gonna lose its durability. So the different gases have different effects. The cloud, the cloud vent, as you can see here, it releases red colored gas and it also leaves some tents on the floor and the surrounding like this. And these things kill really quickly. Now let me showcase that real quick by actually switching my game mode to survival and walking into a pink cloud vent. So yeah. Game mode zero and let's release the pink cloud. And there we go. As I told you guys, these things kill real, real quick. And finally, we have the most interesting thing, which is the chlorine seal. Now the chlorine seal is like the chlorine vent there, but it covers a really, really large section of area really quickly. And the best thing about it, that this gas is transparent. So any mob or player standing inside it, you can directly see them taking damage. So you can use this feature in order to make some really creative and interesting mob farms as releasing chlorine once you have crafted this is gonna be free for the entire time so you don't have to use any consumable or any sword or anything to kill mobs so what i have done here is pretty simple i'm just gonna get some mobs creepers and villagers and i'm gonna put them in an enclosed space like this there goes the villager and once you do that make sure that you close the space now I have placed the chlorine seal as you can see here and beside that one sand bar and then a lever directly attached to it. So you can release the gas inside like this and all of the mobs inside will take damage and yeah they will die. So this process is gonna be free for the rest of your HPM sword. Now once they are all dead just turn the seal off in order to get rid of the gas just wait for some time and once the gas is gone you can just go inside and collect all the loot that you can from that mob so yeah as i told you guys pretty creative mob farms that you can create using this now we are gonna focus on flight and for flight we have jetpacks now there are four kinds of jetpacks available all of them can be crafted upon each other so also we are going to take a look at the jetpack reserve fuel and the different ways that you can use in order to fuel these jetpacks so the first jetpack is going to be the normal jetpack and in order to craft this one what you are going to need is one tier one military grade circuit two aluminum caps two thrusters and one leather then we have the jetpack now as for the builder's jetpack you need a normal jetpack with two insulators, one tier two military grade circuit board, two high speed steel ingots and two insulators. And that will give you the builder's jetpack. As for the vector one, two steel tanks, one tier three military circuit, two motors, two high speed steel bolts and one builder's jetpack. And finally for the boost pack, four satellite plates, two dash ingots, one copper panel, one vector pack and also a tier four military grade circuit. So yeah, these things can be crafted upon each other. Now, in order to fuel these jetpacks, as most of them are gonna run on kerosene, there are a total of two methods. So the very first method that you can use is just take a kerosene barrel, take your jetpack and place it like this in the output section. And there, as you can see, it has a total internal buffer of 12 buckets of kerosene and it is filling at a pretty decent rate. So 
so once you think that you have enough kerosene just take it up like this and then place it on your back now let me quickly switch my game mode to survival so that i can show you its flight capabilities so now if i press the space button as you can see i am gonna go up and you are gonna take damage if you fall down too quickly so make sure that when you are falling you spam the space button like this so yeah it will be like a rocket landing but instead of the rocket it's gonna be you now the builder's jetpack or rather instead of using the kerosene barrels you can directly use the reserve fuel tanks or the reserve kerosene fuel tanks as you can see i have 1000 millibuckets and now i have 2000 millibuckets so you can directly refuel in flight that is what these things are the most useful for and then using the builder's jetpack you can hover in the sky like this by pressing space you will switch off that hover mode and by pressing space again you will go up so yeah it's pretty useful and it consumes kerosene at a pretty slow and it is especially useful for building big structures now for the vector jetpack it is really really fast but yeah it is gonna take you some time in order to control it or basically control how you are not gonna take damage coming down as it is very fast and finally the last jetpack is gonna be the boost pack but as it requires uh, basically bell fire rocket fuel i'm not gonna cover it right now as it is a pretty end game thing. now the next thing is gonna be pretty interesting it is the force field emitter now force field emitter is pretty useful as it can protect your important base from mobs and missiles alike so as you can see it has an internal energy buffer of 1 million he and it also has some upgrades that you can use so let's first get a power source which is gonna be the infinite battery for now but you can use any nuclear reactor as well now once you place the power source inside or you can connect cables using storage blocks oh yeah to craft it you are gonna need these items in an assembly machine and yeah that is how you get the force field emitter So once you craft the force field emitter and you get your power in, it has 1 million HP and 100 HP, just start it using this button right here. And there, it has generated a force field for us. Now remember that every second this is on, it is going to consume power. And as for the radius of the force field, it is going to be like 16 blocks exactly, or rather 17 blocks. So it has a 17 block radius. Now, let me showcase you guys how it resists mob. So if I quickly switch to survival and attack these zombie pigments, they will try to attack me, but they can't get in because of the force field. Now every time they damage the force field, the HP is gonna come down. Hold on. There. So they are attacking the force field and the HP is coming down, but their attacks are not strong enough to basically break the force field. And as long as you have power, the force field is just gonna keep on regenerating itself. Now aside from mobs, the force field is pretty useful for missiles or for resisting missiles. So as you can see, bam. The missile is literally yeeted off the force field. It literally bounces off. It does take the entire durability out, but the force field can pretty easily regenerate all of the HP back again quickly. So yeah. The force field as I told you guys is pretty useful. Now as for the upgrades, there are two upgrades. The range upgrade and the HP upgrade. So if you place one radius upgrade, as you can see, the force field went from here to here. And if you keep on placing them, the radius is just gonna keep on increasing and increasing. Now I do suggest that don't place all of these 16 upgrades as it is gonna lag out your world the force field is just gonna be massive but yeah even with seven upgrades in just look at the size of that force field it's pretty massive and as for the uh, hp upgrade it is gonna increase one edge uh, it is gonna increase 50 hp for every upgrade that you place so in case i decide to place all the 16 upgrades it is gonna take the hp up to 900 so yeah, you can resist 9 missiles attacks one after the other without breaking your force field. 
pretty cool, right? So yeah guys, this was the force field emitter. Use it around your most important objects in base and it will protect them. Now let's take a look at the demon core, the suspended demon core and the closed demon core. Now in order to graph the suspended demon core, you are gonna need one plutonium core, four titanium plates, two neutron deflectors and one screwdriver in the middle and that will give you the suspended demon core. Now the demon core is based on real life demon core which actually was a plutonium core which was supposed to be used in a bomb. It is a pretty interesting story. I suppose uh, I recommend you check it out on YouTube. And yeah. Now once you get the suspended demon core, in order to make it a closed demon core, just throw it on the ground like this. And then once you do that, the screwdriver and the core are gonna be separated and it is gonna turn into a closed demon core. Now the closed demon core is extremely hot, it is gonna give you a lot of damage. But aside from that, you can use it to craft the FAU chest plate. You can also use it to craft the DNT nano suit. Most importantly, you can use it to craft crucible, which is a one shot one kill weapon for most of the mobs. And finally, you can also use it to craft the demon core lamp which is gonna irradiate your world like anything finally we come to the last thing which is the firework battery now the firework battery in order to operate it you are gonna need these following items but most importantly you are gonna need gunpowder so if you have gunpowder just load it inside the firework battery and yeah as you can see it has 192 charges loaded right now and the message is nuclear tech so if i pull that lever it is gonna write nuclear tech one letter at a time in the sky but if i try to do that right now my world is just crashing i don't know what is going on with this update so yeah now in order to craft a custom message you need a name tag and an envil write your custom message place it inside the firework battery and now it will write savage one word at a time you can also place different colored dice and yeah the letters will change their color but as i told you guys my world is crashing as soon as I use it. So yeah, I'm not gonna do that. But do try it out for yourself and have fun. So that was all I had for this video guys. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Peace out guys. Stay safe.